Okay, so let's prove uh, what sine 3x is equal to 3 sine x minus 4 sine cubed of x. So basically what we do understand is whenever you have sine involving the addition of a and b in brackets, this is the same as uh, sine of a and then I'll go to cosine of b and then of course the addition sine will still apply there. So notice that first of all what I started with was uh, the sine of a and then I went to the cosine of b. Now on the other side it's going to be the opposite. So I'll now start with the cosine of a and then we'll now have the sine of what? The sine of b. And of course the other thing that is also very important is if we had to use uh, the double angle implying that we would have a plus a okay that would mean that it's going to be sine a cosine of a and then again cosine of a sine a cosine of a sine a now we do know that multiplication is basically commutative so I can just write them in the same way so that I just start with sine there so I can just say sine a and then cosine of a. Now we do also understand that a plus a is 2a so I can remove that so that we have sine of 2a as a double angle and then these are like terms this and that are one and the same so therefore we have what? 2. I can erase that. So these are the two principles that we are going to use to prove that. Now let's get started. So the first part of course tells us to say sine 3x so we want to express that in terms of an addition, right? So I'll say sine 3x is the same as x plus 2x, which is equal to, okay. So I'll start first of all with sine. So it's going to be sine of x cosine of 2x, and then of course the addition sign. So I started with sine of x. Now I'm going to start with what? The cosine of x. So we now have a cosine of x, and then we'll now have sine what? Sine 2x. Okay. Now at this point, we we'll need now to begin substituting. So I'll continue. This is equal to... Now what is sine of... Uh, sine of x will remain as it is. Now what is the cosine of 2x? So I didn't basically indicate that. Let me just try to show it. So the way it is for cosine, if you have cosine x plus x, for cosine is first of all cosine x, again, you you repeat it. Cosine x, cosine x, and then you go to the other one. Of course, the sign changes for cosine. So it will be sine x, uh, yeah, sine x, sine x. So at the end of the day, what we are saying is basically, it's just going to give you cos squared x, right? So therefore, cosine 2x is equal to cosine squared x minus sine squared x. So we're going to substitute that. Where we have cosine of 2x, we're going to put that cosine x minus sine squared x. Okay. Now on the other part, what are we doing? We are adding cosine x and then multiply by sine 2x. So sine 2x has already been shown. So we'll just substitute where there is a or put x. So it's the same as 2 sine x cosine, let me, cosine x, okay, something like that. So we can now move, remember what we want to show is, we want to show that it's basically going to be equivalent to, to that. So we can clearly tell to say we don't have cosine appearing in that equation that we have on top here. So what can we do? So let's try to move. So if we get to first of all multiply what is outside with what is inside the brackets, what do we expect to have? So we're going to have sine. So we are first of all sine x, sine x, cosine squared x, and then this same sine x multiplied by the negative sine squared x. It's going to be now a negative sine cubed of x plus cosine x times what? Uh, times what is in the brackets. Uh, what basically do you expect to have at that point? So that is just going to be like 2 sine x and then to be 
cos squared x, right? Okay. So now at this point, what you just want to do away with is you want to do away with uh, the cosine because in our proof there, what we just want to remain with is a sine. Okay. So I can now go back to the top part. So what we have? So cos squared x. We do know that we have an identity which says sine squared x plus the cosine squared of x uh, is basically equal to a 1. So if we want to remove that, how do we do it? So we are going to have sine x, where it is cosine squared x, you make this a subject, this one goes the other side, it becomes 1 minus sine squared x plus, sorry, there is minus, yeah, minus what? So minus sine cubed of x. Okay, we can move to the next step. So, plus, so I'll just indicate that down since we don't have enough space. So, plus 2 sine x. And then we'll do the same. Cosine squared x is the same as 1 minus eh, sine squared x. Okay. So, what do we have? We can now simplify this. We'll start first of all by multiplying sine with whatever is inside there. So times 1, it is just going to be sine x. Times negative sine squared x is going to be minus eh? sine cubed of x. And then there is a minus here again. So minus sine cubed x. And then plus, this 2 sine x should be multiplied with that. So it will just be plus sine x and then times negative what is going to be minus 2 sine cubed of what x so do we have any like terms at this point that we can correct so that is going to be minus 2 sine x plus that so it's going to be minus 4 so we have minus 4 sine cubed of x and then this plus that we have 3 sine of x so we can now even arrange it in the same order that we have our the one on top. So it's 3 sine x minus 4 sine cubed of x. So we can clearly now tell to say we've shown beginning from our left hand side. Of course, I just didn't have enough space. What I said is I said uh, my left hand side, which is sine 3x, I'd express it in terms of sine x plus what? 2x. And I've now proven that this left hand side is basically equivalent to the right hand side. And hence we've proven that sine of that is basically equivalent to that.